again, the assumption when it comes to um, uh, addictions is that these people have to hit rock bottom, they have to be punished and so on, then they'll see the light. No, they don't. What's rock bottom for somebody who lives in the downtown east side with HIV, having lost everything? What's the rock bottom that they're gonna have to hit? So that, that is another myth. People don't need rock bottom, they need the very opposite. And Thomas Merton was an, was a, an American uh, Catholic monk and, and spiritual teacher said the following. He said, in order to gain possession of themselves, they have to have some confidence, some hope of victory. And to keep that hope alive, they must usually have some taste of victory. We must know what victory is and like it better than defeat. Victory is when you're treated like a human being. Victory is when you can look upon yourself with some compassion like you never have. Victory is um, when you realize that despite all that's happened to you and despite all that you've done, you're still a worthwhile human being. That's not the kind of victory our system gives people. It's the very opposite. The politicians thrive of creating enemies who are the most abused segments of the population. They thrive of creating fear of them. They thrive of adopting and educating punitive, harsh attitudes towards them. May God forgive them. Because what they're doing is, is they're further entrenching these people in their addictions. The, 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 uh, the research literature is very clear. The biggest driver of addictive relapse is stress. When you marginalize, ostracize, criminalize people, impoverish them, mar and, 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 and banish them beyond the social periphery, you're simply making sure that they're gonna stay addicted. So in the context of the present system, there's simply no hope for the large-scale rehabilitation and for all the good people that work in corrections and for all the idealistic efforts that they put into it, and for all the individual victories that um, somebody in corrections or somebody in addiction treatment, a uh, counselor or a physician like myself, might occasionally witness, for the most part, the system is almost designed to keep people entrenched in misery. I think what's needed, first of all, is a massive shift of attitude. I mean, first of all, you have to understand what this is all about for them and how deeply traumatized they have been and continue to be. Um, and, um, you know, when you look at the suicide rate amongst the Aboriginals, when you look at uh, the school dropout rate, the uh, incarceration rate, I mean, in a country that's supposedly dedicated to freedom and equality, what other segment of the population could suffer those uh, consequences without it causing a national outrage? And uh, our country is spending $11 billion in jail. Well, what I could, what I could do with $10 billion uh, provided to rehab and, and, and re-education, to health care, we spend I don't know how many billions on supposedly bringing freedom and justice and education to the Afghanis. But what a joke. How about bringing it to our own population first? In other words, they would take a massive reorientation of, 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 um, of priorities. Uh, Canada has apologized to the, for, to, to the Japanese population for their um, deportations and, and um, loss of their economic goods during the Second World War. It's taken this country much longer to apologize to the nurse, native people for the, uh, for the residential schools. And of course, in terms of robbing people of their goods, much as the Japanese suffered, their suffering was nothing compared to the losses of the First Nations peoples. We haven't even begun to address that. So, for our part, it would take, when I say our part, on the part of our society and governments, it would take a massive shift of priorities and a massive, um, commitment to be a bit humble and, and, and honest about what we're doing and what we've done.